Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino's LEGO Robotics. Today's video, what I want to do is focus in on those of you that do first LEGO leak and are wondering, hey Mr. Hino, how many students or team members should our team have to be most successful, most effective? And today what I want to do is take a look at the different teams that I've had and the different numbers and just give you a little bit of insight on what I think is the perfect number. Okay, so if you want to see that, stay with me. Hino Lego Robotics. Oh yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and throw this out right now. Um, this is not a one size fits all type answer. What works for me does not necessarily work for you guys. And it's just, I can't throw this out and say, everybody, this is what the magic number is and it's perfect for everybody. Because I've seen different size teams, you know, become successful from all the way from 10 down to three. So it just, it has to do with your dynamics of your students and the team members and how well everybody can get along, how you can coordinate the tasks. But again, today we're gonna look at why a certain number of team members is better than another number. So I have had a team of 10 before and I'm gonna be honest, it was so much fun they were really, they got along really well. There was, you know, just different personalities. And, you know, with a team of 10, you have to be very careful because now you have 10 people where you're trying to mesh their skills, their ability to get along. And the bigger the group, the harder that can be. Now, for those of you that are really good at, you know, taking a, a team of 10 and just having everybody know exactly what they're supposed to do, that can work out really well. I've seen a lot of teams of 10 walk away with core value awards because the judges were so blown away how a team of 10 can get along so well. And that's what happened with my team of 10. I'm like, what, what happened? How did they win that core values award? And it was, it was just one of those magical things where everybody just connected, they clicked, everybody knew their task, everybody was understanding of what their job was. And it was, it was very little stepping on a toes. I know with a team of 10, it's real easy to say, hey, wait a minute, that's not your thing. And hey, wait a minute, you know. But in this group, everybody was so eager to say, hey, maybe if you're not good at programming, I can teach you. Hey, maybe if you're not good on the research project, you know, I can help you out and understand those things too. So it was a beautiful thing to watch. And those teams do not come around very often. Um, so... What am I saying about a team of 10 or a large group like that? So eight, nine, or 10, I usually do not want to steer it that way. If it's a team of eight, I will usually try to break them up into four and four and just have two teams. Here is my logic on that one. Um, I, really, I get real frazzled when, if I had a team of 10 or a large team, like eight or nine or 10, where there's not enough work for everybody to do. And then there's gonna end up being a lot of sitting around, goofing around, where somebody feels like, hey, wait a second, I don't feel like they need me. Maybe there's too many people for the amount of work that needs to be done. So, but like I said in the beginning, if some of you are really good at, you know, taking that team of eight, nine or 10 and being able to say, this is your job, this is your job, this is how you guys will keep each other in check, then I say, hey, I'm all for that. But if you're like me, where it sometimes gets tough to do that, and students come in with this attitude of, well, if I don't feel like I'm needed, I'm just gonna sit here and distract people, I'm gonna goof around, that drives me absolutely nuts. And that's what that's the situation I try to avoid. So, Mr. Hino, what is your perfect number? Honestly, I like to keep it from three to five. That's kind of my wheelhouse number right there. Three to five, because again, what with three to five, you get the, you know, the team working and not necessarily having somebody feel like they're, you know, out in the boonies, not needed. Three or five, everybody can seem to have a job. Everybody can seem important and needed. Again, not that a team of 10 can't feel that way, but just for me and the way I run my practices and you know who's on the robot game and who's able to share what's on the research project and having them be able to function as a team with core values and to be able to do their presentations, 
it just works out for me. Yeah. Um, some of you in the comments can share your stories of the numbers, three, five, 10, seven, whatever it is, you know, it, whatever works for you works for you. Um, one of my best teams was a team of three um, because they were so laser focused. Everybody, they knew what their, their strengths were. They were able to share their strengths with the other two members to be able to just make that team really tight knit and really good. Um, it was, it was a magical thing to watch again, the team of 10, the team of three. Um, and I've had some awesome teams of five or six, but again, what makes that number so special? It's the kids, it's the students, you know, you can get the most, um, you know, you can get a team of three and still have Mr. or Mrs. I'm going to be the boss here and I'm going to tell you guys what to do. And three is not going to work. I'd rather have a team of seven where everybody was a team player. Everybody knew their strengths. Everybody could add to the, the team dynamic instead of having, you know, Mr. or Mrs. I am the cook and I'm going to tell you guys how to cook this up. And it, I don't know. You, are, you have to be careful with that, obviously, when you form your team to be able to kind of see that coming like, ooh, Hey, let's, let's talk this out and see if we might have a reversal of attitude before we, you know, get you on this team. Because, you know, we got to give the students time to change, got to give them a chance to figure things out. So, so today I, I just wanted to throw that out to you guys. Again, I love the number five. Um, it really works for our teams. Throw down in the comment section, what is your guys' wheelhouse number? What do you coaches like to see in the numbers on your teams? What are you, those of you that do first Lego league, what have you guys been successful with as far as the numbers of your team? Cause I'd be interested to see what you guys think. Okay. All right, guys, hopefully you're enjoying this year of cargo connect. Hopefully your school is able to participate and in person, hopefully too, we'll have to see. And uh, I'll catch you guys in my next video. I am Mr. Hino from Missions Lego Robotics. I am out. He's out. He's out. We got this. We got this. We got this, guys. Hey guys, Mr. Hino here. Thank you so much for watching. And if you love robotics, don't forget to check out these videos also because they're cool. Okay, guys? Take care.